What's going on guys? My name is Doug. Welcome to the channel. Welcome to the video. Uh, I'm very happy that you guys decided to tune in today as we go through my favorite tracks off of Juiced World's first posthumous album, Legends Never Die. I know it's been a few days in the making. This album came out on Friday. It's currently Wednesday as I record this. I'm not even certain that I'll be able to get this out to you guys the same day that I'm recording. So um, I'm a few days late. You'll have to forgive me for that, but it, it, better late than never. Uh, this is an album that I absolutely could not pass up in terms of making a video for it. Juice World is an artist that will be sorely missed um, he was extremely talented and just absolutely so skilled and everything that that uh, is, is so likable about this new wave of hip hop um, and also so talented in terms of freestyling and elements that, that are um, so loved in old school hip hop as well. Just pushed into one person who was just so young and still developing their true style and and uh, he had such a bright future ahead of him in terms of his career. So he's an artist that absolutely I had to cover. Needless to say, you know, we, we loved him. And, and uh, it's tragic, the fact that he, he passed away so, so soon. Um, not just because he was so talented and not just because he had such a bright future ahead of him, but because really just, just as a person, he seemed to be, you know, always looking to um, do what he could to help people and, and spread a positive message and it's just very sad, you know, to see what happened to him. Um, after having listened to this project a few times over, it, it seems like he, he knew that that was the direction he was headed in, but he was at a place in his head where uh, he, he felt like he truly couldn't live without the substances that he was abusing uh, and at the same time he felt like it was those substances that would be the end of him, but that they were the reason he was also still alive. Uh, he even mentions that in one of the tracks, um, without the pills I wouldn't be here, but because of the pills one day I won't be here, something along those lines. Really a tragic situation, um, but I, man, that's a really negative note to start the video off on and I'm going off on a tangent. Uh, I'll save those thoughts for the end, um, the review of the project, but yeah, we're going to be listening to my favorite tracks uh, off this project today and um, yeah, it's going to be all love, it's going to be all positivity and, and you know, I. I'm a huge fan of Juice World's music and we got some really dope stuff here that I want to share with you guys. So, first track we're going to be listening to today is Conversations. Let's get it. It's just a filthy bass. I'm not really over conversations. I got my cake and you talk. Timing, all about timing, timing, timing. Sit back in my chair, a real little face. Get me flying, taking all these mess to the face. Get me dying, to my man. Some of the bars on this project are just so tough to listen to, you know. Uh, I, was, I was watching Sean C's video and he said that the, the songs were very prophetic. I thought that that was a pretty dope way to put it, you know, a pretty pretty uh, accurate way to put it. You know, the, the lyrics all over this project, I mean, he, he just litters the, the project with these phrases, um, the, these glimpses of his future, you know, almost like he saw what was coming. And... Um, yeah, some of these lines are very hard to listen to, knowing what happened to him, for sure. He sounds great over this beat. Yeah, man, it's it's a great song. It's it's a, uh, I believe it's the opener for the project. It's not the intro, but it's the first actual track. Such a very strong opener, you know, with that filthy bass line, like the super heavy bass. Um, great performance from Juice World's part and, and these haunting lyrics about not really feeling like he's in the mood for conversations with the demons that are in his head, uh, basically staring death in the face as he tries to cope with his reality by using the pills that he knows are going to kill him at one point. Um, you know, it's very haunting lyrics, um, especially in retrospect, but it's a great track, you know, and, and it's a very nice way that he manages to play with the the beat, you know, and, and flow on it. And his voice is just so great. And he was so talented at manipulating his vocals and just a great singing voice, you know, so much character and, and um, such a nice, like warm tone to his voice. It's ridiculously talented kid, man. And, and it's a great opener for the project. The project itself had a great, like opening few tracks, a uh, very solid start to the project. The next track we're gonna be listening to is Titanic. I like how he really made use of guitars on the project. You know, I think it, he always sounds very nice over guitars. Yeah. 
It's so dope hearing the rock influence. Such a great hook, man. Yeah, you can tell there's like a really heavy rock influence here. The way that he sings, uh, the way that he performs the tracks, the actual instrumentals, always making great use of like guitars and and, um, and especially on some of the other tracks, we even actually get like rock instrumentals themselves. You know, it, it's he was a rock star, like in every sense of the word. I love that that modern younger these younger trap artists that that really they say they're rock stars and their music is actually so influenced by rock music and and the melodies that they sing and the way that they sing the the tone that their voices have the way that they really have like they, they convey so much emotion through the way that they sing it's almost like listening to those those rock bands like you know uh Fall Out boy and panic at the disco you can hear like influences from these guys in hip-hop music it's Great. I love this song. Uh, I think it's got a great hook and as always, you know, a very, very solid performance uh, from from Juice World, and it's got a great beat to it. So, man, it's it's so tough to um, have like an, an upbeat, kind of like a happier energy listening to these tracks because you always have that thought in the back of your head like we we lost this guy, you know? It's tough, man. It's tough. I'm going to try to... Um, lift my spirits up a little bit, you know, have a, like, a little bit more of a happier energy. I, I love these tracks. If I seem down, it's because I'm just sad, you know? I'm sad that, that he had such talent and he was so dope and, and it's just tragic. But I'm gonna try to, for the rest of the video, be a little happier. You can call me on it, so. Bad Energy is next. Day Trip killed this beat, man. <laughs> I was talking on that last track about how he has like a rock influence to his sound. The way that they layered his vocals for this hook uh, really reminds me of G.O.D., which is a band that I basically grew up listening to. Um, probably one of my favorite bands of all time. And uh, yeah, something about it, the way that they that he performed the hook and then they layered the vocals and did the harmonies. Super like reminiscent of, of, of P.O.D. for me personally and, and that's really one of the reasons why I resonated so much with this track is because it reminded me of one of my favorite rock bands. So I'm telling you that influence is just undeniable and it's so he, he does he does the sound absolute justice. It's so awesome. Yeah, I love that song. Uh, it's one of my favorites for sure, especially because of the way that he performed that hook. Firstly, it's a really catchy hook. And secondly, like I said, it reminds me of one of my favorite bands of all time. Um, you know, the lyrics, he tends to freestyle a lot of his songs. And so I, I really wish that he would have written his songs more because the, the writing provides more depth to the track. You know, at, at some points, the, the lyrics seem a little bit superficial. They seem a little bit easy, although he's being honest. Um, he could have delivered the lyrics in a little bit more of a complex way with a little bit more maturity, I guess, if he had written it. But it seems like he was just talking off the top of his head. And at some points, that's really dope. But uh, having that feeling throughout a lot of the tracks that, that these are just off the top of his head and, and not very... Um, he didn't really dive too deeply to write these tracks. Um, it does get a little repetitive at some points. It does get a little bit like monotonous. Um, one of the things I tweeted just yesterday was that I feel like the project as a whole would have been better off with 10 fewer tracks, um, which is why we have so few on my favorites list. Um, just because, it, if, like, just to prevent that feeling, you know, that, that it gets repetitive and monotonous listening to it. Um, so I wish that these lyrics could have had a little bit more depth and substance to them, a little bit more complexity, but still, for the most part, like, this is just still a great song, you know? Um... That's just how good he was. The next track is Righteous. I'm not going to be spending too much time on this one because I have a video for this track already. If you feel like checking that out, uh, it's in the, the corner somewhere. Love the production, man. The guitars are so dope. Yeah, that's just a great track. Um, I have the video for it, like I said, and you should definitely check that out. I thoroughly enjoy it. 
um, you know, ever since the first time I heard it, this has been on my playlist. Uh, so yeah, great track. Next track on the list is Tell Me You Love Me with Trippy Red. Yeah. Trippy killed it. So nice to hear him like rapping instead of just singing, you know? It's a great song. I love it. They switched up the vibe a little bit, switched up the rhythm. You know, it's got a really cool little hook from Trippy Red. Love hearing Juice World actually rap on this track. Uh, you know, it's it's a catchy song, and uh, yeah, just the versatility and, and the little bit of a, a variation in the actual uh, style of music um, is one of the reasons why I, I really like this one. Yeah. The Kid Leroy killed this one. Yeah, Juice World killed that hook. Polo G and the Kid Leroy, absolutely great features. Marshmallow killed the beat. This is one of the tracks that I think is going to do, uh, pr you know, pretty well in terms of numbers. Um, I think it's really catchy. I think it's, it's you know, going to be p getting plays on the radio. Yeah, I personally, you know, I, I think it's uh, the better Marshmello track <laughs> on this album. The other one was okay. I wasn't a huge fan of the, the purely instrumental, you know, chorus. Uh, although Juice World was, was pretty dope on that track. But um, yeah, this one is the better Marshmello song in my opinion. Really like it. Next track we're going to be listening to is Fighting Demons. Yeah, one of the reasons I love this track so much isn't necessarily because it sounds the best or, you know, the, the beat is pretty predictable for Juice World. He has the typical Juice World performance. His voice sounds dope as always. Um, but just how, how real he gets, you know, talking about fighting his demons, talking about why doesn't, asking himself why doesn't he feel happy even though he's made it, even though he's rich, talking about how, um, you know, how hard he feels like his life is sometimes and how hard he, uh, how hard it is to deal with these demons that he's fighting and, and, and these uh, issues that he's feeling, you know, insecure about or, or whatever. I mean, it, just how real he gets is why I like this track so much. You've got to admire the honesty, the sincerity, the openness uh, on these tracks, you know? Wishing Well is next. I think this song has the most impressive vocal performance on it. He's hitting those notes, man. That one bar, you know? I, like, if you had to choose one bar to define the project, that would be it. If it wasn't for the pills, I wouldn't be here. But if I keep taking these pills, I won't be here. That's the bar of the project, in my opinion. Like, it defines the entire sentiment that I feel this project brings with it, you know? Having the Juice World on the cover with the, the sky in the background, title Legends Never Die, basically talking about a legacy that he left behind. And just the whole album is rife with this, this impending doom that he, he saw, you know, while he was still alive. I mean, over and over and over again, we, we get this idea from him that he knew he was going to die because of these drugs. Um, and, and that's super, you know, evident throughout the, the tracks that he felt like that, like his time was coming sooner than, than later, you know, ra uh, sooner rather than later. And, and uh, yeah, just that one bar defines that sentiment with this project perfectly. Yeah, the reason that that one made it onto my list is because uh, I'm not a huge fan of the beat, but I think that... Uh, his vocal performance here is the most impressive performance on the project, in my opinion. Just the range, you know, the, the high notes that he's able to hit. He's really belting and singing his heart out. And, uh, you know, I gotta respect it. I think that it's the most impressive, and that's why I made it on my list. 
Stay High is next. Really catchy hook, solid production, uh, you know, really going off in his verses, got a really dope uh, flow. I'm not mad at that one. Uh, the last track we're going to be listening to today is Can't Die. It's a really emotional track. Uh, sometimes I feel like I can't die because I never was alive. Like, how how bad and heavy do you have to be feeling to say something like that that you've never lived, having you know achieved so much acclaim and success and, and made so much money and, and living you know a lifestyle that people can only dream of and still not feeling like you have it, still not feeling good, still not feeling happy, still not feeling like you've made it, still not feeling satisfied, and, and not because of greed but because of of just, you know, how depressed you are and how, how messed up you feel about yourself. Um, like, how sad do you have to, to really be? Like, how much was he suffering to say something like that, you know? It's just unimaginable. It's, it's an unimaginable suffering. And it's so sad to see that he was going through that. Um, you know, it's, it's just, just so tragic. But that's a really great song, in my opinion. Uh, and that's the last one that made it onto my list. Uh, so let's talk about this project, man. <clears throat> you know, I was disappointed with this project, I will say. Although I, I thoroughly enjoy these tracks, and these are my favorites, I was pretty disappointed with this project as a whole. It had over 20 tracks on it, and it, it just felt, you know, overwhelmingly, like, monotonous and, and repetitive towards the middle. Um, I feel like a lot of the production choices could have been better, and... Like I said towards the beginning of the video, I wish that he had actually written out some of the songs instead of just freestyling so much because it, it creates this feeling of um, scratching the surface only, you know, with every single song, just scratching the surface of what you're truly trying to say uh, in terms of how complex you can say it and how deep you can actually go with your lyrics. It always feels like we never truly got to see just how skilled he was because he was always freestyling his, his music and, and almost never truly writing it out and really developing his thoughts into a little bit more of a coherent message, I guess. Um, and I feel like that would have come with with time, you know, I feel like he would have developed into somebody so, so tremendous. And he just never got the opportunity to, you know, so I, I don't hold that against him or anything like that. I, I guess I could hold it against the people who, who put the album together, you know, they should have kept it shorter, they should have really just chosen the very best songs. It, it really gets to a point where the production is also similar and, and the performances are also similar that, you know, you're, you're really just kind of going through tracks and, and not even realizing that the song is ending and another one is starting, you know? And I feel like that was pretty disappointing. I mean, I believe we listened to less than half of the project today that made it onto my list of, of favorite tracks that I want to keep in rotation. And, you know, that's not, that's not, that's not good. Especially in comparison to Pop Smoke's posthumous album, which was so dope and uh, full of variety and versatility and, and, you know, epic features. This one felt a little underwhelming. Yeah, if, if I had to rate it, I would probably give it like a five, you know? If they had kept like 10 tracks off of this project, I probably would have given it maybe a six and a half, something like that. It could have been so much better, I think. I think that they should have taken a little bit more time with it to really develop it and flesh it out. Um, but in terms of these songs that I played today, they're my favorites. I really like them. I think that Juice World's performance was spot on. I think that the, the beat selection was really dope. I, I like the features that we showcased here today. And um, yeah, in terms of these tracks right here, really no complaints. Um, honestly. And um, yeah, those are those are kind of my thoughts on the project. Thank you so much for watching the video. Again, sorry for the kind of like low, lower energy vibe to the video today. It's just really sad, you know, it's really sad. Even though we're listening to my favorite tracks, um, that recurring message of I know what's coming and, and I, I'm, I just have to face it. And then actually knowing that he did face it, um, it's just so, so sad, you know, so I'm sorry about the, the vibe of the video, but at least we're honest, you know? <laughs>
Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video anyways, and uh, I'll be back in another video real soon. So um, until then, guys, stay safe out there. Peace out.